Hello everyone, my name is Mrs. Robina. I am a kindergarten teacher at James K. Polk Elementary. I am going to read one of my favorite stories. Actually, I wrote the story. It is Coco Goes to School. And at the end, we're going to play a few rhyming games. Coco Goes to School by Khadija Robina. Illustrated by Mara Islam. Kevin is dressed and ready for the day. He's excited to go learn and play. Coco's ready too and runs in the room. She plays tug of war by grabbing Kevin's shoe. Kevin, come on, says mom. We can't be late. Coco doesn't want him to go. She tugs at Kevin's shoelace. Mommy, can Coco come along? I will make sure nothing goes wrong. Don't be silly and hurry. I'm late for work. Okay, here I come, Kevin said with a smirk. Come on, Coco, hop in my book bag. No one will notice you if you don't wag. Off they go to the car. Kevin's idea was so bizarre. Out the driveway and down the lane. In the bag, Coco remains. She knows that she can't make a peep. She remains very quiet and falls asleep. They arrive at school. Mom lets Kevin down from his seat. He runs to the door without missing a beat. Bye, Mom, he shouts as he walks through the door. I love you, honey, she wonders what he could be rushing for. Kevin runs to the coat closet. That's where he hides. He makes sure no one is inside. Okay, Coco, you sit here. I will be back when it's all clear. But she escapes and runs towards the class. Kevin tries to catch her, but she's running too fast. She runs into the Legos. She runs through the blocks. She makes a big crash through the music box. She jumps on the table and spills the paint. She makes paw prints on the classroom sink. Oh no, Kevin says. Coco, stop! But she's too excited. She jumps on him with a big plop. He starts laughing and is down in a sprawl. Hey, what's that noise? Someone yells from down the hall. Uh-oh, Kevin exclaims. We've been caught. He won't get away with his silly plop. He runs with Coco behind. The bathroom is the only place they can find. We're safe, Kevin thought with a sigh of relief. He doesn't know that this feeling would only be brief. Coco, we'll stay here and be just fine. Kevin feels sad when Coco starts to whine. She wants to play, not be trapped inside. But Kevin is afraid and he intends to hide. Don't cry, Coco. It'll be okay. Kevin was happy to be at school with her today. He goes out to make sure the coast is clear. Coco, be sure to stay right here. He opens the door slowly and makes a loud squeak. He wants to go out. He wants to sneak. He looks to the left. No one in sight. He looks to the right and jumps with fright. Excuse me, what's going on here? The principal was standing right there. Um, was all Kevin could say. But Coco takes action with no delay. She runs out the bathroom and zooms past. What? What just went so fast? No time to explain, Kevin took off after. He didn't know Coco would cause such a disaster. Coco runs down the hall, following her nose. In a hurry to the lunchroom, she goes. She turns to see Kevin behind. She thinks they're playing a game where she runs and he finds. 
Oh no, Coco isn't looking ahead, and Kevin is wishing he stayed in bed. Coco crashes into the food cart, kaboom, making breakfast fly all over the room. Everyone comes out to see what's the matter. Kevin's covered with food that made a big splatter. Coco licks Kevin, and there is chaos in the room. He knew that this would inevitably end in doom. What is this? We don't allow dogs in school. Look at the mess it made. Who broke the school rules? Whose dog is this that made all this mess? Kevin sadly replies, Mine, and drops his head to his chest. Kevin sits and cries softly. He expects the worst to come. Coco snuggles beside him warmly. She also looks very glum. Well, Kevin, say goodbye to your friend. I'm sure you knew what would come. You have class to attend. Your dog must leave. This will need to end. Kevin walks away. He sits at the table alone. He did not want to be bothered anymore. He just wants to go home. He wonders, what will happen to Coco? Will she be kicked out of school? He knows bringing her was not cool, but he didn't think it was against school rules. The day is such a drag. Finally, the end was near. He saw Mom come out of the office and then begins to fear. She says, Kevin William Parker. I heard all about your day. I told you not to bring her. Dogs can't come to school and play. I'm sorry, Mom, Kevin says with a sniff. I should have made a better choice. This is just the beginning, Mom said in a mumbled voice. As Kevin grabs his bag to leave, the principal waves goodbye, still in disbelief. How could a child and his dog cause so much trouble? All she could do was shake her head and chuckle. They walk to the car. Come on, in your seat you go. Mom opens the door. Kevin is suddenly gung-ho. Coco! She gives him a lick to say hello. He hugs his dog tightly. Mom lifts them both to the seat. She straps them in gently and gives them both a treat. He says, Coco, next time you'll stay at home. You can't come to school. Even though it was fun, we broke all the rules. Mom laughs to herself. She knows they are the best of friends. And between Kevin and Coco, the adventures never end. Until next time. I really hope you enjoyed listening to my story. So now, just like we would do if we were in class, I'm going to ask you some questions about the story, okay? So the first question, who are the main characters in our story? Remember, characters are the people or animals that the story is about. So who are the well, two main characters in our story? That's right, Kevin and Coco. The mom is also a character in the story. And also the principal makes an appearance in the story, right? Let's see if I can get a good picture. The principal. Mm -hmm. But the two main characters are Kevin and his, his puppy Coco. Good job. What happens in the beginning of the story? So, whenever we are retelling, we can always use the book. So, I'm going to look in the book, okay? So, in the beginning of the story, um, Kevin is getting ready for the day, right? And he has this idea to bring his puppy to school. Even though mom told him it wasn't a good idea, he made the choice to bring her anyway because he wanted to have fun with her. 
What happens in the middle of the story? Again, we're going to use the text. Well, Coco makes a big mess and he and someone hears them at school. So Kevin tries to hide because he knows that Coco made a mess and he knows that they're probably going to get in trouble now. So he tries to go out and sneak, but he gets caught by the principal. <laughs> But Coco, being the Coco she is, decides to run and then makes an even bigger mess in the cafeteria. Oh my goodness. So Coco has to leave. And how did Kevin feel about Coco leaving? He didn't feel good about it. He was very sad. I mean, he was worried. He wasn't sure if the principal would kick Coco out of school by herself. If, he, if she would be lonely, he didn't know what was going on. He just had to go back to class, but he couldn't enjoy the rest of his day. What happens at the end of the story? Well, at the end, it's the end of the day. Mom comes to pick Kevin up, Kevin up from school, and he has time to reflect and, and you know, he realizes that he made a bad choice by bringing Coco to school. He should have listened to his mom and kept her at home. So he's leaving for the day. And then he sees his friend Coco. So he's happy because Coco is safe. They're back together. And he learns a big lesson. What lesson does Kevin learn? Exactly. He learns that dogs stay home. They cannot come to school with us. Only people come to school so that we can learn. All right. That's a great lesson. So now we're going to play some rhyming games because in our story, it follows a rhyming pattern. And I love to read rhyming books because they're so fun and it makes reading a whole lot better. So now we're going to play some rhyming games. All right, now we're going to play a rhyming game, okay? So here I have a picture of a tree. Which picture rhymes with tree? Tree fish, tree cap, or tree bee? Tree fish, tree cap, tree bee. Tree bee, good job. Tree rhymes with bee. Let's do another one. Here we have a picture of a dog. Which picture rhymes with dog? Dog pail, dog frog, Dog map. Dog map. Does that make the same sound at the end? No, it doesn't rhyme. Dog says og at the end. Map says app at the end. It doesn't rhyme. Dog frog. Does that rhyme? Yes. Dog says og. Frog says og at the end. Those are rhyming words. Dog, frog, dog, frog, they sound the same. Let's do another one. Here we have a picture of a pie. Which picture rhymes with pie? Pie tie, pie dish, or pie plant? Pie plant. Does that make the same sound at the end? No, they have the same beginning sound, p -p -p. but remember when we are rhyming, we're not listening for beginning sounds. We're listening for if the sound is the same at the end of the word, okay? So plant is out. What about pie dish? No, that doesn't sound the same. Pie tie, do those words rhyme? 
Yes, pi, tie sound the same. They are rhyming words. Let's do another one. Here we have a picture of a rock. Rock. Which picture rhymes with rock? Rock. Ant. Rock. Clown. Or rock. Clock. Rock. Clown. Hmm. Do those words sound the same? No. Let's look at the word actually. Let's flip it over so you can see. And let's flip over this one. Okay. So words that sound the same look the same, usually look the same at the end. So rock has O C K. Clown, it has an O, but it has W N. So at the end, clown says own, rock says ock. So that is another way we know that these are not rhyming words because they don't look or sound the same at the end, okay? What about rock clock? Yes, rock clock. And let's turn it around and look at the back. So as you can see, they both have O-C-K, ock, ock. So they sound the same, rock clock, because they look the same or look similar um, on the back. Their words look similar. So that's how we know they're rhyming words. Rock, clock. Let's play a different game. So I have six cards here and we are going to match the cards that rhyme, okay? So we have a duck, bell, crown, truck, clown, shell. We are going to match the pictures that rhyme, okay? So let's start with the duck. Which picture rhymes with duck? Sounds the same as duck. Duck bell, does that sound the same? No, not quite. What about duck clown? No. Duck truck? Duck, truck. Yes, duck, truck sounds the same. Duck, truck rhymes. And if we look on the back again, we see that it ends in U-C-K, both of them. U-C-K, they say uck, uck. So duck, truck are rhyming words. Good, let's look at our other pictures. We still have a bell, crown, clown, and shell. So, which picture rhymes with bell? Bell clown? Not quite. Bell crown? No. Bell shell? Yes. Let's look at the pictures. Let's look at the word. I'm sorry. Bell shell. What do these words have that are the same? E-L-L, -L, bell, shell. They both say L, L. So they are rhyming words. Bell, shell. All right, and let's look at our last two. We have crown and clown. They sound pretty similar, but let's look at the back and make sure those are rhyming words. So both of these words have O-W-N. They both say own, own. So they make the same sound at the end. And when we we know that rhyming words make the same sound at the end so these are in fact rhyming words clown crown all right let's do one more together so i have six new cards we have a bear a top jar mop car pear we are going to put together the cards that rhyme. 
All right, so let's see. Bear, mop. No, bear, mop, that's a rhyme. Bear, top. No, bear, top, doesn't sound the same. Bear, car. No, bear, car, doesn't sound the same. Bear, jar. No. Bear, pear. Bear, pear. Bear, pear, sounds the same. Let's check the words on the back and be sure. So here's bear, pear. These words have what? What what letters do they have that are the same? E A R. They say air at the end. Bear, pear. So these are rhyming words. So we're going to put them together. All right, let's look at our other cards. Which picture rhymes with top? Top jar not quite top mop top mop top mop sounds the same let's look at the words on the back top mop these words both have op they say op at the end op op so these are rhyming words top mop Good job. And our last pair, jar, car. Let's look at the back. Make sure they sound the same. We need to make sure they look the same. Jar, car. These two words have A, R. They both say R. Jar, car. Jar, car. These are rhyming words. So now it's your turn to guess. Here's a picture of a fish. Which picture rhymes with fish? Fish nose, fish plant, fish dish. Fish nose, fish plant, fish dish. If you guess fish dish, you are absolutely correct. Fish dish rhyme. Let's do another one. Here is a picture of a house. Which word rhymes with house? House hat. House mouse. House fox. House hat, house mouse, house fox. If you said house mouse, you are super duper smart. Good job. Let's do one more. Here is a picture of cake. Which picture rhymes with cake? Cake. Snake, cake, box, cake, moose. Cake, snake, cake, box, cake, moose. Cake, snake, good job. Very good. Let's review our rhyming cards. Say the picture and the rhyming words along with me. Clock, rock, car, jar, mop, top. 
pear, bear, bee, tree, goose, moose, shell, bell, truck, duck, clown, crown, pie, tie, frog, dog, cap, map, pail, snail, ant, plant, bed, Sled, corn, horn, skate, gate, boat, goat, gum, Drum, flag, bag, cat, hat, man, fan, fox, Box, nose, holes, dish, fish, mouse, house, snake, Kate.